Hey folks, Flip here, and welcome on back to the Hardcore World. We're starting off today's episode here in our brand new quarry build, which I love so much, but man, we have got a lot of stuff on the schedule today, even a lot of stuff to catch you all up on. That's right, it's Mountain Update Day, so straight into a time lapse we go! Holy guacamole, my friends. We've done a lot of work inside of this time lapse here. I didn't really realize how much work had been done over the last two weeks before watching back to these time lapses here of going through all this stuff. And right now, what you're seeing here, all of these scaffolding things from this section, basically from where we're working on that left side all the way over to the right, is going to be finished up. And while we're starting off the time lapse here, I wanted to say a quick note is that I'm going to be doing a massive stream day tomorrow on Friday the 8th which is uh, tomorrow. As I mentioned, we're going to be starting around 9 a.m. Pacific time or that would be noon Eastern time or 5 p.m. GMT. I'm going to be doing a subathon, which basically the idea behind that is you all pick how long the stream is going to be. The more people subscribe and donate and things like that, the longer we're going to be streaming and the longer we're going to be working on the mountains and other projects inside the hardcore world. And whoever knows what the heck else is going to be happening during the stream. But I really would love to have you all come out and hang out don't feel obligated to do anything. If you just want to chill in a nice, relaxing Minecraft stream for a little while, you're more than welcome to stop by for that thing. But oh my gosh, we've already done so much work on the mountains here. The goal that I had set out for myself was to finish this entire section all the way throughout. So we've done that front section already. And I want to start looping around to the backside so I could actually see what it'd be like on the inside having the full finished mountain effect around us. Because, you know, I've never really done the back of a mountain before, so I wanted to say that, you know, I can do that. It's possible for me to do these types of things inside of Minecraft. And so coming over here, we're getting a lot of these last little sections filled in, filling in all of this stuff. And then I want to start bringing in a lot of snow, which we'll get to here soon. And oh my gosh, you can see the snow in the background there, but that's not the full effect I'm going for. That doesn't have the snow layers that I want on there. That doesn't have everything else that I'm looking for. So it's almost there. It's not quite perfect, but we're gonna really smooth things out and just make it look absolutely amazing. First and foremost though, as you can see, we've got a lot of blocks to place in at this point in time. It's a great thing we're building that cobblestone generator today because we've already went through about 10 different shulker boxes worth of stone and the equal, if not more, of dirt. So if we only have to gather dirt in the future, that's gonna be great. Now getting over to placing a bunch of the snow in on this build, you can see how insane it's starting to look. Getting a lot of the snow layers in here, replacing a lot of that gross dirt stuff with actual snow blocks so it looks really, really nice and just kind of getting everything cleaned up throughout here and it just feels so much more like a finished mountain environment and I love it. There's a few places that I missed that I'll come back and grab later on when we're doing the final touches and everything. But you can just see all the detail being added in with the layers there if you look closely into it. And then finally coming over here and we ran out of stone so I set up our beacon. We killed that wither a little while ago. Thankfully we were able to get a lot of stone out of this area and chunk away a lot of that land and be able to fill it. Well, that's actually right on top of our enchanting cavern, which was really funny. We broke into that on stream accidentally. I was like, oh, uh, we're not supposed to be here. Finally coming over and using almost all of that stone that we gathered, filling in a lot of the dirt throughout this area and really creating a cool slope because I want to come back here and build some structures on it. I really want to build like a llama ranch. I almost said lava, but llama, quite different things here on the back so we can have a really cool reason to come around to this backside and actually be able to look at all this stuff. So we can build a roaming or just some weird mountain trail to get us all the way back here, kind of precarious type style of really skinny mountain walkways, being able to get ourselves all the way over to this backside. And we can have our llama ranch here because well, um, a lot of llamas have died on the making of these mountains because they keep spitting at the zombies underneath and then the zombies go and kill them. And I feel really bad about it. So I want to give them a home to help repopulate the entire mountains. Let's get in game. Fan flipping tag. We're all caught up now. Now it's time for today's action. As that big stream is coming up, I want to be able to spend a lot of time working on the mountains on it. My goal is to finish the entire front face of the mountains over here, which is going to be insane. And I don't want to spend the entire stream gathering stone to be able to do that. So we're going to need a cobblestone generator, which I've mentioned in the past, to be able to do that for us. And well, my friends, I thought a perfect place to hide it would be inside of the walls of of this quarry. So somehow we're going to blow up the cobblestone. I'm thinking underneath it right over in here and it'll flow out into a collection system, which will all end up in the warehouse we built in the last episode. Now, before that, though, I want to detail the quarry area a little bit further and create a spot for some stonemason villagers for us so we can trade for all the diorites, andesites, quartz and everything else that we could possibly need. Don't forget bricks. Bricks are very important. Cannot forget bricks on this one. So let's get all that stuff sorted out first. 
Ignoring the technical thing, I want to come back over to this area real fast and build up a crane overlooking the quarry space for us because I feel like it would be one, really, really cool, and two, add a sense of realism to the quarry itself. We have a crane that's able to lift stones up out of this area. As our pathway to get up and down is very steep, I feel like a crane sitting right up here could be a fantastic way to go. So let's get it done. Moving on into a little bit of a good old fashioned time lapse mode here. We've got the crane build coming on. I want to get a road over here and create a flattened out area for us to put the crane on top of because I feel like it needs a lot of support. Otherwise, it might just topple down into the quarry, which is not what we want. This thing is a design that I've used before inside of my survival world. Absolutely love it to bits. It feels just so strong and industrial. It feels like it actually has the ability to support all of the stone that we are pulling out of the ground inside of here. So I love it. Absolutely so very much added that little bit of a crane figure right there or something that we could load things onto for the lift And it's just so very cool. The scenery around this area is just really come together Some have told me this looks like a squirrel some have also told me it looks like a weirdly terrifying clown face nonetheless We have three of them <laughs> I love that from the last episode. Now, it's one of those things I'm never going to be able to unsee. Anytime I put spruce trap doors or spruce doors with a button in the middle, it's a face. Taking the first step back here for myself to see this build all together. Oh my gosh, I love that. Oh, that turned out so absolutely well. Wow, that crane fits up there perfectly. It's great for the skyline of everything, really disrupts it all, adds some dynamic movements into this area. Maybe I should go get some stone and throw it on there. So it's rather interesting down here that we have all these chains and everything because that's gonna kind of limit what we can do and where we can place things. Because we could do something like this, then maybe, ooh, wait, we could just, how does this look from the outside? Something that would be stable? Yeah, that looks totally fine. Oh my gosh, I love that. Oh, that's even better than it was before. You know those extra dark oak logs I had in the last episode that I could not find a place to use? Well, my friends, we're gonna be using them today because we've got ourselves the stonemason headquarters to build over here. I'm very excited for this one. If we start out here, and I forgot to grab the smooth sandstone, and we bring ourselves with that. We're gonna have a little doorway right here that I'm thinking we could bring it over that way a little bit further and we're gonna have to chunk the terrain back a lot here. I wanted to have it feel like it was actually nested in the mountainside almost. So it just, the roof is more or less gonna be coming down right on the line with the mountain. Now over in this area is where I wanted to have a lot of the villagers sitting. So we're gonna have one here, one here, and one here. And we're gonna have the stone cutter things gonna be right there. Then we're gonna have no stone cutter here. There we go, bam, bam, and bam. Which means we've got to bring the structure all the way around those. It's gonna be very tight and skinny in there for us to be able to get in and out to do our own thing. But I think that'll make it a lot better looking on the outside. As mentioned, we've got to clear out a lot of this junk in here to be able to actually build the thing. But that should be pretty cool. Part of this, we're actually gonna to need to be able to get the villagers up here before we can finish the build. Because, well, I want to use a brick chimney. Bricks is something that we can only really get in mass quantities from these stonemason villagers and I want to be able to show that through the building itself. I thought that could be really fun. Now for the front of the guy over here is where I want to have the statement piece of something that we can use to look outside and see everything going on around us. So we need a few of these dark oak stairs right over in here and we need to get a few slabs for ourselves as well. Then on this upper layer, I was thinking we go one, two, three, and four tall here and then we can start bringing a lot of our stripped dark oak or our stripped oak logs here, not the dark oak ones. And because I must, we have to include a bay window. Filling in the stripped oak logs all the way around here it really cleans up this area quite a bit then we can start working towards the bay window which we're gonna need a few more blocks for but starting ourselves off we can go trap door and trap door and can i reach the that is very far <laughs> it's like maybe i can reach the graphic table not today my friends my arms are not that long i absolutely love this little detail right here and everybody's like oh my gosh you're insane that's so cool how do you do it well my friends it's four glass panes and you do two blocks of glass right there in the middle and then let's go ahead and use some of our excess spruce stairs right up here and fill in the top of this guy that's the whole front of the structure minus the roof on it then i was thinking on the sides after we sleep where's my bed there we go as many of you pointed out in the last episode that uh i took one and a half hearts of damage from fighting a single zombie where i killed the wither without taking a single piece of damage so i'm still very very terrified of the nighttime now i really wish there was a way to get a lot of smooth sandstone because i love building with that stuff but man harvesting all the sand or sandstone and then smelting it down is a major pain in the bum so over here we're going to be using a bunch of oak planks instead because it's a lot more easily accessible resource on top of this roof right here all we're going to do is step this up with slabs going all the way over here 
and then bringing it back down on this side. So it's just gonna go woo and right back down, which will turn out to look like something right like uh, so. Perfect. We've got a very, very simple build over on this side and I wanted to add in a window right here so we can have something easy. Let's torch it up for now before we open it up to a bunch of creepers and we can start on the second floor. One thing I see very, very important on these builds is if we bring it out one going this way to here to the front, we need to be able to mimic the same thing on the back. Granted, we have all of this terrain built up right back in here, so we can kind of ignore most of it, but we'll throw the stair in right there and make it look like we're paying attention to all of it, but it'll be a-okay. Now, I don't think it would look that great with having a double bay window, one on the front and one on the back, so for now, I'm just gonna fill this all in. We'll figure out the windows here on this side later on whenever we get around to detailing stuff over here, because this is where I want to really feel like we're in the middle of a village. I wanna build a bunch of houses around here. I think it'd be really cool. So any ideas you have for house things that we could include inside of the village let me know but before i get ahead of myself we should probably focus on this build before i plan out every single one of these builds and get a little overwhelmed i've been really focusing recently on focusing on just the one the one thing i'm doing at the moment i can have ideas in mind for things i want to be doing in the future but for now the thing that matters is being able to get this structure done using all the excess spruce stairs that i made in the last episode as well we can start to work on this segment over here which i think at this point in time i probably showed a million and one times but every single time i still get questions and flip how do you make that roof design and well my friends that's all it is we just did it right there you just go up and then you do the exact same thing on the other side and go straight across there is something really relaxing about crouching and just placing stairs in a really long straight line until you get that one time where you accidentally place in right click too quickly and it gets placed the different direction. Yeah, that's a pain in the butt, but otherwise very relaxing. And that looks really nice so far. We will also be getting a chimney breaking up this whole face probably right about in this point. I'm going to bring a big old brick chimney coming right up throughout here. So we've got to go ahead and move some stonemason villagers up here for now so we can start trading with them and get those bricks to be able to build the thing. By the villager breeder over here, and I think we only have three or four of them in there, and I want at least six. And is this farm still disabled? It looks like it is. Let's do that, and then we can climb right in right there. Perfect. So if we just break this guy, that will start the farm up again, and eventually we should see a little baby popping out. One thing probably very important to the decorations down here is gonna be the stone cutters themselves. We need exactly six of them for the main areas, and on top of that, maybe we can bring in some more barrels. I was starting to run real low on those things. So back in this area, I was thinking we could throw a big window here in the corner. Then we're gonna have all of our stonemason villagers in here, obviously, right? And I thought it'd be kind of cool to build some stone structures around them so they really feel like stone masons. The floor, I think I'm gonna change to jungle wood I don't know why it just seems like it'd be a really good ad for in here and then on top of that we can have some uh, stone walls coming all the way up here to the top and then we can do stone brick stone brick stone brick and if we add in some trapdoors right in here the villagers will not be able to get out then all of our stone cutters are just going to be sitting right in these spots as well because the villagers will be able to access them from back there and that's going to be our little setup for the trading hall we will need to come in here and add in all these different sections with stone pillars of sorts reaching all the way up to the top so that nobody can get out and this in here is going to be our trading hall quite an interesting looking thing but i think it'll turn out okay for us in the end here i i like it i think it'll work out really well oh oh skeleton somewhere but whoever the lucky trader is that ends up right in there he's gonna get a little window for himself because it perfectly peers out into the warehouse area i think that'd be kind of funny to walk by and just see the villager chill in there and voila look at that i really like it okay well i've got to dig a tunnel I've got a little bit of a tunnel that we need to get all the way back over to here. What are we at right now? We are at like 1171. Perfect. I thought this tunnel was going to be way longer than it actually is. We went all the way down to there, then was like, I think I went a little too far. Well, the floor is actually right up here. That turnoff is going to have to be very, very steep to be able to get all the way up to this point. Oh, I really like that. That's going to be so easy. Just turn here and woo, you're up. The entire rail line is in place. We'll patch up this floor when we get in there eventually. I've got some emeralds on me for the trades, and I'm really hoping we have a few potions of weakness down here. Of course, we only have one. Well, we can do four villagers for now. I'll figure out a way that we can get these guys set up a little bit better here soon. Let's take the smithing table out of here. Of course, it's an axe. Why is it an axe to break a smithing table? That does not look like wood. Stone cutter in place, and let's summon our first villager. I really should hook up a button down here to summon them, so we don't have to walk all the way over here. And there we have it, our first stonemason. One emerald for 10 bricks. Is it even worth converting these guys? We'll convert the first one here, but first and foremost, let's level them up. 
20 stone for one emerald. That could be usable later on, but what I really love is that that just got us 40 brick blocks. Oh, that is amazing. Now let's get a few uh, chiseled stone bricks here too to level them up even more. It's still one emerald for everything. So uh, of course we're gonna take some polished iron, right? A whole stack of it. Look at that, it's amazing. Back with our new stonemason friend, and I'm gonna say we don't convert him unless y'all tell me in the comments that we need to. Everything here is one emerald for one block, and that sounds great to me. So we're gonna send him off this way, verify everything's going, that'll send you here. And then that track's turned up there, perfect. Off to your new home, buddy boy. And there he is, all the way in the back. You can get your stone cutter right there, and if we do F3B, it'll give us the hitboxes, break that minecart, and you're in there forever, my friend, yay. Now to do that, five more times. It's time to play the waiting game, getting the rest of that set up here because uh, the villager breeder is out. I've got three of them in so far, waiting to get the last three in, and I figured now would be a great time to build up that chimney. I thought it'd be super fun to come back over here and take a few of these guys out, throw in some more of these bricks. We've got a lot of brick blocks at this point in time, which is absolutely awesome. So we've got a little bit of a cover here in the front. Now I was thinking we'd do something very, very simple here on the front front of it on the inside and just do something like this. From here, we can bring ourselves all the way up and then probably these are gonna have to be replaced with brick there as well. Just to make sure it's more on the seamless side. We can have some fireplace stuff down in there, but for now, I wanna focus on the outside exterior look of this place. And back over here, we've got a little bit of room to work with. We can throw a wall in right there. Maybe do another wall right here. We could do a stair, a stair, and then bring ourselves up a little bit further off of these guys. Unfortunately, we're running into a little bit of an issue right here with that window setup that we had done earlier. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and bring that wood right back over here. And then what we're gonna do is actually push the brick back to here. Then we can make a really cool little bit of a chimney accent by bringing it all the way up to the top of these guys. And then we throw a campfire in. And I've done this many, many times before, but just surround it with some spruce trap doors and it looks so much better. And topping it off with a little bit of a polished andesite slab, it feels like a cool little chimney topper. Perfect. Back to waiting for villagers to breed. It's okay. There's no need to be shy. It's fine. I'm just watching. It's it's okay. Really, it's okay, guys. It's fine. Come on. It's okay. I'm just, just ignore me. You do your thing and I'll do my thing and just sit here. It's fine. Just ignore me. It's okay. You don't have to be shy and staring at the trap door over there. You know, your bu your best friend, the farmer, is right over here ready to wait for you. It's fine. I'll hold the sword here and just continue to watch. And just like that, a few minutes later, we've got three baby villagers for ourselves. Gotta wait for those three guys right down there to grow up and then we will transport them over to their lovely home and the stonemason building. We now have six stonemason villagers sitting inside of here, pretty much all with maxed out trays. And I decorated the inside of this place to look oh so nice. I brought in some warped slabs up here and they look amazing. I need to use that block more often. But anyways, these guys are all chilling over here. Still gotta max out these last few, but I got the trades I wanted being the bricks, and you can see we've got a lot of lava in my inventory, and I've got a lot of fun things over here, because my friends, it is time for the cobblestone generator. This thing I'm calling the cobblestone egg. It is a design by Il Mango. I wanna give credit where credit is due to him for sure, because unfortunately, he's been experiencing a lot of people stealing his stuff and reposting it. For clarification, this one's by Il Mango. He's an amazing, absolutely talented Minecraft redstoner, technical genius, everything like that. Let's build the farm. Without any further ado, let's kick this off into good old fashioned time-lapse mode. Digging deep underground here into the base of our quarry, I wanted to stuff the egg inside of the wall just so it's out of the way and we could have something cool down here and I wanna design a room around it, something maybe themed after the Dwarven Fortress, but I have no idea yet. This thing was an absolute headache to build. I blew it up, uh, I think a record four different times at this point. Uh, I did the lava wrong the first time, so all the glass got blown up around the lava. Instead of that, then all the water leaked out, and then also at the top, I messed up the redstoning with trying to get the TNT minecart duplicator system to work. I have very technical stuff that I don't really know how to do. Apparently, I had to push it on with a piston for it to work and not register an update. I don't know, my friends, but there you can see it's all completely exploded. Let's I'll get a fix and be back with you. Down the quarry, through the massive shulker box land, we now have cobblestone generator. Oh, I'm so very excited for this one. It's working out really, really well. It was a pain in the butt getting the TNT placed in here, but check this out. We flip that lever, the TNT ignites, we run away or we take some damage and it goes down there and blows up everything. An issue I had was that actually uh, one, we're taking damage. So let's take, take a little bit of a step back over here. 
but I need to change all of those lava things to lava source blocks instead of just falling lava because then it uh, made it work a little bit better there. And if you saw in the time lapse, I had one headache of a time trying to get that TNT in there to cause it to not activate and be able to actually duplicate itself. So that was really fun uh, dealing with. Now it's all working, good to go, and we have a lot of cobblestone. I got a stack on me right now, and that right there is another about 20 or so. Nice. Next up is how can we get the items for the cobblestone from down there? all the way to the top of the quarry into our warehouse structure right over here. My thought is that we could bring the items in right through about here and have them kind of snake along this edge through some hoppers. I'm just going to use a lot of hoppers. I'm not even going to try water streams. And then we're going to have this entire place just filled with chests. It's going to be very small. So we're going to have a little tiny walking space right through here for ourselves. And then it's just going to be chests everywhere full of cobblestone. I have done it, my friends. Going through the squirrel doors, we now have walls to walls. Actually, just one wall and a very, very narrow corridor in here full of chests with hoppers everywhere up there. I know it's super tight in here and I just want to make it very functional. If we walk inside, we grab all of our cobblestone that does not exist in here currently, but I had to add an extra boulder back here. And if we walk close to it, you should hear some water because this actually has right under here and that andesite's gone forever. That is a water system on top of a bunch of hoppers leading itself over, which is going back into the hoppers behind everything there. The farm is actually directly under us. It was perfectly in line to be able to set up the storage system. Now to find that andesite. There we go, first chest. I haven't had a chance to test this thing for a good while yet of actually being able to run it for any decent length of time, but I think now is the time to be able to do it, or at least start it and run away and hope that we don't die. Ah, uh, because if we stick close to this thing, I really got to rewire that up, but we will start to take damage. I need a better idea for something to build around the egg down here. So if you have any ideas on that, please be sure to let me know. But we should see some cobblestone flowing off this direction. There we go. And it looks like it went up. Let's go check and see if it's in the storage system. Awesome, it's coming in here. I think I just need to find a spot to AFK safely inside this area. Maybe I'll put myself in inside of a box of obsidian or something so nothing can get to me. But my friends, just a reminder here that we've got the big ol' stream happening tomorrow being Friday, the Friday before Christmas. I do hope you all have a chance to stop by the subathon. And if you want to catch streams in the future, follow me over on Twitch. Link is down in the description below. Absolutely love having y'all over in the stream. Super fun to be able to hang out. But that, my friends, is going to have to do it for today's episode. We've got a temporary super smelter over there to smelt some of this cobblestone down into some stone because, man, we're going to need it for these mountains. But that's it for me today. Click that like button if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're brand new and my friends I will catch you on the flip side